Florence Leung, a postdoctoral research associate in Moth Lab at Imperial College London. My research interest is in the area of medical and surgical robotics. In my previous work, I've developed a magnetic-based surgical robot for abdominal surgery with a controller that rejects disturbances due to magnetic interference and tissue dynamics onto the robot during magnetic actuation. Currently, my team and I are working on a robotic patient platform for a medical examination training. Our aim is to make the training more effective in sharpening the trainee's perception and examination skills without the frequent need to train on actual patients. Here, I'm involved in the virtual physical modeling of the interaction between fingers and abdomen during palpation examination. I'm constructing a three-dimensional finite element model to investigate the perception and sensitivity on fingers, as well as the behavior of the abdominal tissue during palpation. This will then lead to a 3D surrogate model for implementation with machine learning to obtain optimal design parameters in different conditions for the development of the RoboPatient platform. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am uh, Lucas Schmecker. I'm a postdoctoral research associate in the Barnes Power Robotics Lab at uh, Cambridge University. Um, my background is in artificial intelligence and I apply this to robotic systems. Um, more specifically, I'm interested in the use of machine learning to uh, augment control sensing and perception in robotic systems with the uh, emphasis on the tactile sensing. Um, in the RoboPatient project, I have devised um, several new ways of performing a RoboPatient to uh, optimize the sensing of normal inclusions in soft bodies. And in the future, I will most likely include uh, feedback from the patient side where the robot uh, should take into account the patient's pain or discomfort uh, to perform diagnosis. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Liang He. I am a PhD student in Moth Lab at Imperial College London. My research is in the field of soft robotics and medical robotics. I am interested in using soft robotic approaches as an interface to study human haptic behavior when they are interacting with the environment. I have been working on the development of the robot patient for the past three years. I designed robotic phantoms that can both simulate abnormal conditions and sense the external interaction. In the robot patient project, this type of sensor rest robotic phantom acts as a physical platform for us to study either robotic palpation or human palpation in a quantitative way. Training a medic is always difficult and time consuming. In the next stage of the study, we will engage with more clinical user tests to explore the robot patient system's potential to increase medical training efficiency. Hi everyone, I'm Tini Lajitaratna. I'm a postdoctoral research associate in MOP Lab at Imperial College London. And my background is in robotics and intelligence systems, where I'm interested in soft robotics, medical robotics, and brain computer interfaces. In my previous work at Saga University Japan and University of Morito Sri Lanka, I focused on investigating how muscles and brain signals can be used to control assistive devices such as prosthetics and exoskeleton. In the RoboPatient project, my primary involvement is in developing a visual feedback system for the RoboPatient and to explore how humans integrate different modalities of feedback such as haptic, visual and vocal in a primary examination like palpation. Basically, I investigate how we can develop, test and validate a modular, mobile and high fidelity robotic face which can mimic facial expression of different gender, ethnicity and age faces. Eventually, this uh, robotic face will integrate with sensorized Robo patient where user will have a realistic and effective medical training. Hi everyone, my name is Simon Hauser and I'm a postdoctoral research associate at the Bioinspired Robotics Lab at Cambridge University. My research interests lie in robotics at the intersection of mechanical design and control, specifically for the study of locomotion. My previous research includes the design of animal-inspired feet with special adaptation capabilities that mimic the adaptability of human feet, improving locomotion of leg systems on rough terrain. I use the same technology to develop a wearable joint stabilization device with tunable joint support, which for example could be used for recovery of joint injuries. 
I'm currently working on a controller strategy for leg systems inspired by the spinal cord of vertebrates, which aims at demonstrating animal-like fast and emergent locomotion, recovery locomotion strategies in the case of morphological or environmental changes without the high-level involvement of the brain. Hi. After having seen all the introduction videos, we'll now do a short interaction session. And um, let's kick start with the first question. So I have a question for Luca. What makes palpation so challenging? Okay, so palpation has been uh, used in our team um, as a complex platform to test um, advancements in robotic control and perception. Um, this is mostly because uh, it's characterized by the soft interactions um, of the sensing probe performing palpation, um, as well as the softness of the tissue uh, layers in the human body, possibly hiding abnormal inclusions. Uh, the type of tactile perception necessary to be able to accurately solve this problem is marked by the ability um, of the robot to understand um, the, the perceptual consequences of its own actions. And by that, I mean the influence of the doctor's uh, patient strategy to the tactile information. All right, thank you, Luca. So let's move on to the next question. Yeah, uh, I have a question from Leah. Uh, what are the current palpation training simulators and what makes the robo patient system unique? Okay, thanks for the question. Um, so current palpation training simulators are in general located at two extremes. Uh, the commercial mannequins that are very limited at uh, simulating different disease conditions and uh, uh, many research works, uh, on the other hand, focus on creating a virtual reality environment on the screen where the trainee uh, interact uh, with the object through a single point uh, haptic manipulandum. Well, in the fundamental principle of the robot patient idea, we create a more haptic interactive environment and that close to the real clinician scenarios. Only that we can control the uh, disease the condition. While this approach uh, allows the trainee to uh, calibrate the tension in their arms and fingers with uh, sensorized uh, feedback uh, without needing so many years of experience. Thanks. Great. So, um, any other questions? I have a question uh, for Florentio. So, will the 3D model uh, be integrated with the robot patient system? All right. Thanks for the question. So yes, uh, we are planning to um, convert the 3D model into a augmented reality AR platform for medical training. So this will be integrated with um, haptic sensory feedback. So for example, the robot patient hardware or even a um, remote or portable solution like a haptic device to sense any inclusions in within abdomen. So with this um, integration, the trainees will be able to observe and experience how their behavior, uh, how, the how the behavior of their fingers change the uh, dynamics within the tissue according to the force feedback from the haptic device and um, like how the tissue and the mass actually displays, deform or even relax. Yeah. So we can also add color contour mapping um, to visualize uh, different pain levels and also sounds. So this will give trainees a more multi-model sensory experience and uh, give them an opportunity to um, explore different palpation strategies or like finger configurations and uh, stiffness to help them sharpen their examination perception. I have right. a question for Tilina. Yeah. Um, what factors do you need to consider in the development of the robotic phase? Yeah, that's a pretty good question. Uh, there are a set of specific challenges we need to address in the development process of a robotic phase for a robot patient. One of the most important factors we should consider is the diversity of the facial appearance and facial expression that we need to replicate to the robotic phase, uh, which means uh, the developed phase should be synthesized uh, facial expression of different gender, ethnicity, or age phases. On the other hand, uh, the oral uh, development of the phase is a close through process. So at, at one stage of the design process, uh, we should investigate how people uh, would perceive these uh, robotic phases. So based on their responses, we should uh, update the design, uh, the ro robotic phase, uh, so that it can mimic uh, more realistic and more effective facial appearances. Uh, so 
in addition uh, we we can uh, uh, check the possibilities of synthesizing highly human like faces or even uh, animated faces or even we can try cartoon faces yeah that's great so let's move on to another question uh, so I want to uh, ask a question for Simon. Uh, since you are expert in locomotion, uh, I was wondering how can locomotion help in the robot patient project? Mm -hmm. So the, the physical examination of the patient, of the patient by a doctor is a, an interesting opportunity to study interaction phenomena, uh, where the goal of the doctor is to provide the accurate diagnosis with minimal discomfort. But uh, so patient strategy needs to be adapted for, for each individual patient. And this has some similarities to locomotion control, where on the one hand, locomotion also deals with, with physical interactions where a robot or a structure is in contact with the ground and where action and reaction of the robot together with the feedback that the robot receives, they are very tightly coupled. Luca was already mentioning that. And so on the other hand, the, the locomotion strategy also needs adaptation, usually for a specific morphology or even in the same morphology, for example, during growth. And some ideas from locomotion studies could help in understanding how to adapt for patient strategies to achieve this um, the adaptation for each individual patient. All right, thank you. It's been great knowing how everyone has a role and how we actually, actually contribute to the Robo Patient Project. So we look forward to uh, more progress and more interesting findings from everyone. Yep, thank you all.